Welcome to the ATB Project. You're with your host, Matt and Steve-O again. Yep, no Jeff again. No, Slacker. he's um, I didn't get his nails done. Yeah, that's, that's, that's about right. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so today what we're going to be talking about is some really weirdly interesting stuff because mm. we get often we get asked to speak on behalf of natural medicine or we'll get asked to get involved in little government discussions about mm. different uh, types of medicine and where complementary medicine or alternative medicine may fit in regards to mainstream medicine. Steve, you've had a lot of experience with um, education and training naturopaths. Yeah, it's been good. And you've seen how um, the training has changed, even in the last 20 years, to the Very point that much. now... A lot of these natural medicines or alternative complementary medicine are looked at as pseudosciences with no place in universities yeah, and that yeah, sort of stuff. So yeah. there's been a very interesting trend in recent years, mm. um, possibly in the last 20 years. 20, yeah. It's Probably just change. 20 years, you think? And and also some medicines have emerged that have become a bit, a bit more mainstream now too. We've yeah. had some wins, yeah. um, which is great. And, and I, that's why I thought, you know, it was a good idea to, to talk about the history of medicine yeah. and natural medicine. And, and get some perspective because perspective. I've always... Now, I'll, I'll, I'll put in a disclaimer here about potential rant material here. But the thing is, I've always been a little bit offended by the terms alternative or complementary yeah. medicine, especially complementary medicine. It really yeah. bugs me. Um, and and the funny thing is, is I, I prefer natural medicine mm, and yeah. things that follow the laws of nature. I like to talk about it that way. Complementary medicine to can to think that we use food, um, essential nutrients yeah. to complement a chemical. Yeah, it's it doesn't weird. make sense. Or the the one that bugs me probably even more is actually alternative yeah, medicine. Yeah, that bugs me because the most. It's an alternative to what? Yeah. Um, this other one's not proven to be mainstream medicine. I mean, sorry, it is mainstream medicine apparently, but mm. it's not proven to be the medicine. And no. this is alternative. And what bugs me most about the term alternative medicine is alternative pr- practitioners then feel the need to be alternative. Yeah. Um, and they feel the need to be obligated to give you an alternative point of view to everything. So if, if the, the general Sorry. consensus is this, I feel obligated to give you that. Give you another one. So those sort of things are dangerous and they're also misleading because... If you really look into the history, just a very we're going to go through some details and that sort of stuff. But for perspective, some of these textbooks, so naturopathic textbooks, Ayurvedic medicine, mm-hmm. the Indian Ayurvedic is is one of the oldest we believe. Mm-hmm. So they got potentially up to five thousand years of trial and error. Mm-hmm. We know we've got written texts there that are over two thousand years old, yes. and those two thousand year old written texts list exactly the same foods, mm. exactly the same herbs and exactly mm. the same treatment modalities from 2,000 years ago that we're using today. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're not advancing within no. the natural world. It means that these are base things that are okay. They're basic foods. And these are food medicine systems, which mm. is why most of those things are teas and soups and stews. Mm. And with these or natural medicine things working on a, a code of ethics of first do no harm, mm. these things have had lots of trial and error, which is why none of those things have actually been banned. The only herbs that have disappeared out of these textbooks are ones that have been now restricted because they've been parts of them been taken to make drugs or or there's some political agenda behind why we can't use a natural herb over mm. another natural natural herb. Um, you have a look at traditional Chinese medicine, a couple of thousand year old. We've got those textbooks there that list off formulations, not just herbs, but actual formulations that are still being used today, unchanged, yeah. um, with all of those years of trial and error. The Western medicine and the um, even the Middle Eastern medicine, that all came from you know following the models of Ayurvedic medicine mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff. So we're looking at natural medicine systems with thousands and thousands of years of trial and error Mm. and certain protocols certain concepts and ideas Mm -hmm. are still being studied today and proven to be correct and none of these things have been banned and none of these things have been taken away none of these things have been shown to be just ludicrous and wrong yeah they get into these books and they stay there and they become you know they're they're sort of things that people could actually live on as food three times a day you know Mm. so well, as many times a day as you like to yeah, be, I suppose. But I just three. decided three because that's when you're going to get your breaks if you work for me. No, uh, exactly. <laughs> and and it's absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. I like amazing. that. Another word we don't use. Amazing often enough. because medicine, natural medicine, to me, is about being healthy and about being well and vigorous. The alternative to that is ill health. Yeah. So I, I, and that's where a lot of medicines come in. I always look at medicine as being the you know if you're healthy, that's great. You don't need any medicines. Yeah. The alternative to that is taking medicines. Yeah, I always think the orthodox medicine is more alternative because not 100% of people have to eat food, don't they? Yes. How many of them have medicines? I hope not 100%. No, 
they're getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> no. but the, the, you, yeah. You, you don't die of a of a Prozac deficiency, but you can die well, of food well, deficiency. Exactly, yeah. an essential so, nutrient. Yeah, yeah. To think an essential essential nutrient is yeah. an alternative medicine. We talked about what two to five thousand years of. Uh, you know that mm. this natural medicine's going probably longer. So, what do you reckon about a hundred years ago when they decided to call the medical thing that we see now orthodox yeah, medicine the, the, or the, the mainstream the medicine? The mainstream orthodox. What do they call it? So, if ours is if the natural one's alternative, what's this? Oh, like well, you know, just just medicine they call yeah. it, don't they? Yeah. They I suppose yeah, because we're an alternative to medicine, so they're medicine. Yeah. So. This has been for what ninety years. Ninety about ninety years, yeah. And it, so what we want to do now, we, we've pretty much summarised the two to five thousand years of natural medicine. Mm. They wrote, they tried it for thousands of years before publishing stuff, and they haven't changed it hardly no. since. It's we just keep working on it and developing it further with the same sort of stuff, getting better with modern technology for standardising extracts and looking at synergies and that. But it's hardly changed. Yeah, exactly. So let's have a look at what's happened in the last ninety years. It's incredible. Of the Orthodox? What are we going to call it, Steve? Well, you know, orthodox, orthodox medicine, you know, in the 20s, you know, hit, hit its straps and that's where it became allopathic medicine or, yeah. or normal, you know, medicine. I don't What's know what allopathic we call it. mean? Allopathic Sorry. medicine is when medicine treats the disease itself, the process, the bugs, the, the killers. Um, so it's a drug that'll target a cancer correct. or a drug that'll target an infection yeah. uh, or a surgery that will remove it. Yeah. splinter or something but without actually addressing the person correct you don't treat the person the person treat becomes the disease not the dis-ease yes the, the person becomes a little bit irrelevant yeah um so for example if if, if in, you know you gave someone antibiotics yeah the person it, it goes out there and kills the bug yeah whereas natural medicine builds the person up so the immune system can adapt and kill that specific bug yeah right so a little bit different so the problem with penicillin is it's a molecule that looks like abcd it doesn't change it can't adapt yeah what it looks like the first four letters of the alphabet <laughs> yes well, it's got different structures, but it doesn't change. Yeah, right. The, our immune system, and, you know, in a podcast we did recently, was all about the different T helpers yeah. and all the different immunity things. So our body can adapt. The penicillin can't. That's yeah. why you get antimicrobial resistance. Yeah, yeah, and, right. And when Fleming sort of, you know, came out with the first penicillin, it would kill pretty much any bacteria around because it had just stopped the cell wall from replicating. Yep, yeah. And all, all, you know, bugs have cell wall. And, of course, yeah. that would kill about 99% of the bacteria. Uh, 99 point something probably. Yeah. And then this other 1% would be killed by the immune system. It'd be yeah, able to yeah, yeah. knock it or, out. Or, or live stay on. there and live on because yeah. and breed resistant strains yes that's and, kind and, of how and the bug evolves. resistance occurs yeah exactly and, yeah. and and there is a video online now where, where harvard university have put e coli plates with different concentrations of micros i think i showed yeah, you yeah yeah it's it. wicked and the bacteria grows on the first plate and then the second plate takes a while and then it evolves and grows because they put antibiotics on either different yeah, plates stronger ones. and it just works its way across becoming resistant to the antibiotics so so that that's evolution in in the process of, of yeah. things and, and this is what evolution is is the, the advent of the, the superbug they even named bugs well, after was that about 1920 you said 1928 was when Fleming accidentally discovered so 90 penicillin. years ago 90 years to this day this well, year. It's a day year, year yeah. yeah so so you know p you know he left his petri dish out overnight and yep. the mouldy bread got into it and killed some of the oh, strap or strap so or now the big testing. fear in the medical world is the resistance to antibiotics and these super yeah. bugs that have been evolved so within 90 years the the main hero of mm. the allopathic medicine is um now needing to be rejigged and yeah. looked at. Oh, guess what they're doing? They're looking back into the natural world for solutions. No. To where they found penicillin originally yes. anyway. It was moldy bread. Moldy bread. Yeah. So that's interesting. So the allopathic medicine started with a, with a penicillin. What that's else have we got from these guys? What oh, else have they done? Can, I, can I take a little bit? Because the, the picture I'm trying to show you here mm. is that we're looking at about 100 years mm. of trial and error trial and error yes, within this right. thing which is why they still call some, it a medical practice yeah some, but some they, were good so this is a, a hundred years of trial and error but um well so thousands of years with the natural stuff a lot mm. of the within this hundred years there's a lot of things that have already come and gone there's already things that with it they did it for a bit and then a decade later they realized it was killing people or bad or not even that long and then they they quickly took it out yeah so there's very in within this hundred years apart from penicillin which has yeah. now hit come towards the end of its Pretty much. thing yeah, it's so not as much. is there anything that's lasted the time is there anything that actually oh. um is showing to be better well or? well things like um the first one here i've in front of you is, is the anesthesia that that yep. that's a success story now yeah cool but at the time the first anesthetic was cocaine it's truth yep 
Well, that, that tends to wake you up, doesn't it? Yeah, but it kills pain too. Yeah, right. Eh? Uh, and then the next one was yeah. chloroform, which of course yeah. knocks you out. It, it kills you too. But if you didn't die from it, you slept. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you might have seen the movie where someone puts a cloth over someone and they, mm. Ooh, you know, that, that was yeah. the early ones. Now, before that, there was no anesthesia. So if you needed a leg chopped off, yeah. you just tied you down and everyone held you down. And it reminds me, there was a famous surgeon in the 1800s called Liston who was a, a very famous practitioner for performing surgeries. Yeah. And he would go around America doing it. He said he could amputate a leg in under two minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. And he, he did a famous that. demonstration where he uh, <laughs> he got his assistant there and he had all the doctors around. And anyway, um, it was a, quite a brutal event. You know, the, I can imagine. The, the, mate, the patient, he's trying to amputate a leg. The, the patient was alive and awake, and not there was no anesthesia. I mean, you want it like a bit of a band aid sort of thing, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. Awake, but yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, he's chopping through the leg, and of course, <laughs> halfway through the process, he accidentally chops his fingers off his assistant. What? Yeah, his assistant was holding your leg down. He accidentally chopped the fingers off. Anyway, this, this, this stuff, <laughs> it happens. blood and stuff everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a bit of a mess. Yeah. And anyway, so he freaked out about that I and accidentally imagine. cut the coattail off a doctor who was observing and freaked out because the doctor thought he'd been cutting his leg, so he died of a heart attack. <laughs> and his assistant, died. who lost the finger, died of septicemia, got oh. blood poisoning, and he died. And the person who was getting the operation, surprise, surprise, died as well. Oh. So it was the, the, a, a great surgery where there was a 300% mortality rate that's impressive isn't that's it? that's skill so that yeah right and with no anesthetic or no, anything like that no. so so anesthesia was first used and yeah um you know it, it's become a success i mean we've got that yeah. and our profanol which is great to knock people out for yeah. surgery and it's it's pretty safe unless yeah. you know michael jackson's doctor gives yeah. it to him and then he tries passes to resuscitate away. him on a bed that's right. Yeah, so Michael Jackson, um, what was the name of that one again? Profanol. Profanol. So, so it's a, it's, it's, it, Michael Jackson used to call it mother's milk because it would knock him out. D- during the night of his death, he was yeah. given a benzodiazepines, which are sleeping yeah. tablets, like yeah. normal ones. He's given three different types, long, medium yep. and short acting. Didn't knock him out, which normally they should. And so the, the, the doctor administered uh, a profanol. Now, How now, long's profanol been out? Is that oh, a while. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's used all day, every day. Now, yeah. the only problem with it yeah. is that it suppresses your body so much that it suppresses some of your breathing, which is not a problem if you're in hospital because the anesthesiologist just gives you a bit of oxygen. And that's you get that little thing on your finger yeah, and it tells ox. you how much oxygen's yeah. in your blood and then it drops down to the 90s and says, hey, take a couple of breaths. Yeah, or pump. Yeah. 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 So it's not a problem until you, you know, give it to them and then leave the room. Yeah. Which is what happened. And of course, it's a famous case. I'm not giving anything away, but no. Michael died and his doctor got four years for malpractice and all that sort of stuff. I've forgotten his name now. Doctor, what's his name? Anyway, yeah, I think that was it. He died. But yeah. um, there's been some great, there's been some successful. Another one is is female hysteria cures. Have you heard about those? <coughs> I don't believe they exist, Steve. <laughs> yes, that's there's right. There's a significant amount of female hysteria in the in the world. All right, so so we're we ready for some complaints here, and look, this is history, what? so it's not. Uh, no, about me, or what? What are you about to say? Well, <laughs> there, it was said that um, you know, like um, Hippocrates said that well, I think it was Hippocrates who said there was a wandering uterus, and all this. So women had emotions. Do you not talk hormones. about my? Do you, do you, is that what you call my <laughs> wife when I'm not around? The wandering uterus. <laughs> Is that because she's what was that hysterical wandering uteruses? Yeah, that's that's how it used to be. Because when you got to remember back then, when they cut open a woman to see what killed her, yeah. the uterus, the, the muscles that supported the uterus there, yeah. would be just you know relaxed because the person was dead. Yeah. So the uterus would be somewhere else, be sloughed off to the side or something. Yeah. So the uterus was said to wander, oh, like a womb and with a view. Yes, if it was made of glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Uh. So the treatment for hysteria for a woman was. To go to a physician to, to find be, your uterus. Well, to be pleasured. I don't know how else to what? put it. The, the doctor would pleasure the woman and yeah. the orgasm yeah. would increase all would the great brain chemicals and the woman would feel better again. And the uterus would come back into line? It would come back into line. Because the wandering uterus, yeah. uterus was causing hysteria. Yeah. So uh, they had to remind them where it was. And, and absolutely, I, I'm going to read is that, from, what the, is that what you're saying? Is that yeah, what it says? It would find its place again. And then uh, along with that would be sanity. Sanity, yeah, and and I'm oh going to read. Gosh. I'm going to read this. So I don't You're going to get hate mail. Oh, I'm going to hate mail, but Not but me. <laughs> I'm going to read this. Read this from a, 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 a actual source. Is doctors of the day, on the other hand, were apparently um, not um, happy to be manually using their fingers. The solution to alleviate the hamstring was they invented a thing called the vibrator. Oh, good. And that's get where the, it's for the the vibrator. <laughs> 
can we drop ah. the topic now? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, sorry about the so mail. So that's what the vibrator was invented. Yeah, that's invented. Where invented by doctors By too. a bloke. Yeah, of course. It's true. It, back then, doctors were males, unfortunately. That's just the way it was. And yeah. You wow. know. So pretty. Anyway. So that, that that was a pretty good treatment, and uh, I get. And so how long? Oh, well, that's still in them. Well, that's one of the drugs that. Well, that's one of the treatment treatments. modalities that's still in practice today. It's still in practice today. Um, I don't think it's cured any hysteria. No, but uh, um, another famous one was the birth control. I mean, we can debate about the side effects of that. But in '42, that was a, a huge breakthrough. So the other thing that happened in 1942, though, uh-huh. was interesting because this is when they're doing hormones. So what? Um, birth control did they do in the 40s? Uh, estrogen. Just loads of estrogen. Just bucket load. Was Why it not? from pregnant mares you're on yeah, as well? Of course. I mean, where else do you get it? <laughs> I don't know, Steve. Yeah. But I don't... I still can't grasp the concept that someone might have had a crack at that to think it might fix their hot flushes or stop them from getting pregnant. Well, I mean, um, urine therapy is also another therapy that has been going on for years and years. And who is who belongs to urine therapy? Oh, Which this, side of the does that come this, from? Uh, Romans, actually. The Romans and Romans and the Renaissance periods, the Chinese, the Indians, and the French. Yeah. Um, and it's you know still it was said to be teeth whitening, skin protection. Is that in the forties and that as acne, well? Or no, is that, this is going a back a long time. Long time ago. A long time ago. Why would yellow um, wee be skin whitening? This does not make sense. No. The, Anyway, hey, when I were talking about the 40s and you said yes. the contraceptive pill and I asked about if it coming from um, horse wee, yeah. the reason why is because in 1942 they mm. also made a drug, Premarin, Premarin, which gets its name from pregnant mare's urine, yeah. which had like 50-something different forms of estrogen. They'd yeah. never, they just equine kept, yeah, they had no idea, equine estrogens. And, and I suppose they, they, they gave wouldn't have had the technology back then to test the, all these things properly. Well, they either. could have. They could have done a randomised uh, placebo-controlled trial. Well, they, what they did do, though, was they waited till 2002 to do <laughs> 60 that. 60 so years. 1942, they made this uh, pregnant mare's urine to treat hot flushes, yes. menopause or hot flushes. Not the other parts of menopause. Their focus was hot flushes. Mm. Um, and then 2002, they did the WIM study, the, World he- the Women's Health Initiative yeah. study. 60 years later, mm. no, 60 years women have been using this. So anyway, they had 16,000 women in this study. Um, they had to pull the pin on it. They had to cancel the study because too many Why? people were dying of cardiovascular events, stroke, breast cancers. So there was way too many diseases associated and deaths because they had to call it off. There's a reasonable amount of deaths to expect in a study. They, they went way past that Did they? Within, within a short period of time. So they canned the study. It's a bit uptight, isn't it? They didn't ban the drug. No. The drug is still available today. They just stopped doing the study because it was too dangerous to be... The ethics committee said, you can't experiment on women like this. <laughs> just sell it to them or prescribe yeah, it to prescribe them. Yeah, prescribe it to them. And then when they come back with... Well, they don't usually come back to the doctor dead but when they come back with side effects and that sort of stuff they just and it was never even mentioned it was hardly mentioned hey that, no, remember it was, that it, was it wasn't put on the news or anything mm. i think they had to go what the the finding in 2002 i think they had to go put a sticker on the front saying may increase risk of cardiovascular events yeah. but that was on the cigarette packets anyway so no oh, one cares yeah, so you terrible. know what i mean like how so so 1940 so 1920 something they did this 1942 this one's coming out. Yeah. yeah. What else we got, Steve? Mate, can I take you back to 1895? I love it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Effect. Yeah, 1995. There was a, a, a guy who developed the cathode ray, oh, which yeah. yeah, which would secrete a very very high frequency radio frequency. Yeah. That would pass through pretty much anything. Yeah. Except um, like bone, for example. Yeah. So if you shot this ray through um, something, the, the whole thing would be black. But if you put your hand in front of it. It would the, the rays would stop at the bone, so you so the bones so would show up white. An X ray, X ray. Whoa! And they called. Do you know why they called it an X ray? No, because the guy didn't know what the hell it was shooting out of this stuff. So he said, "Oh, it's it's X rays. It, it didn't know, X is unknown quantity." Yeah, right. Yeah. Eh? But but huh. going back to in, into the early nineteen. Lucky uh, they did because they'd have nothing in X in the alphabet books. <laughs> yeah, it's an unknown quantity. <laughs> in so my, ex, my kids' X rays books, X is for X ray because no kids can say xylophone. And now the new one is X-ray fish. Yeah, exactly. So this was by William. We, we, uh, his William name is William Rochin. Yeah, right. He was a famous scientist. So he first X-rayed his wife's hand. Oh. And and even into the nineteenth century, nineteen fifteen, it was the basic treatment for acne vulgaris. X-ray. Yeah, it was to emit the face of X-rays for fifteen minutes aside. Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> what's so, wrong with that? What are the, well, remember, we're, we're 100 years ago. What's wrong with that? Well, I, well, I had to have an x-ray recently. Yeah. And I basically, they, they just sit me there and they get the little thing on me and then they all bolt <laughs> and they hide themselves behind this big thick-ass wall and sit there and go, well, and press these buttons. And they wait for the smoke to clear, and then they can, no, no smoke. And then they wait, and then they come out and reorganise the next bit, and then bolt again and hide. Mm. So mm. blasting your face for fifteen minutes, aside, by aside, like on a regular basis. That was published in the literature. Yeah, so that's a bit of um, oxidative stress there. Oh, maybe, but it would <laughs> kill the propionine bacteria. Better acne. bloody would. And so the acne cleared up. They got cancer, but apart from the cancer, <laughs> they got cancer. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know. <laughs> but the statistics of how many people died of acne significantly improved. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that, that, that's the good old x-ray. And, of course, it's wow. still used to this very day. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, sparingly and a lot safer. And Remember, yeah. they, they, they used to use x-rays to see whether your shoes fit. Yeah, right. Because they shot it through your foot and you put your foot under this thing and you wiggle your feet around it because you can see if your shoes are fitting. How else <laughs> do you tell if your shoes are fitting? I was just... I don't know. You feel it? Yeah. That's, that's no. So many ways. I would x-ray. never have considered an x-ray, x-ray as a is, way to see if my shoes is, are on is, right. Is so cool. Um, another good medicine, I can take you, uh, another good one is insulin. That was in oh, yep. 1921. Uh, because before that, you had type 1 diabetes and then you died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did they invent it? Oh, they got it out of animals. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they synthesized it first in 21. And they, the first guy they gave it to lasted 13 years, which is an incredibly long time. Because yeah. without it, you die. Yeah, exactly. It's not like a, 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 a thing. So, so, you know, insulin was a really cool one. <coughs> That's um, a good one. It is a good one. Um, of course, then the germ theory came out. Now, the germ theory is a, obviously not a medicine, but it's a theory to say that, hmm, bugs cause disease. And that I bet was you a, they said it like that too. They did. They went, hmm, hmm. bugs cause disease. Actually... What they discovered was that people were dying of cholera yeah. and they, they linked it back to one pump yeah. in England. Yeah, wow. And they eventually discovered that this thing had a thing in it, we'll call it bacteria, yeah. with bugs, and that's where the germ theory... Because before that, what caused... Uh, you know, what, what, well, you what couldn't caused see it. You was couldn't bad see it. air yeah. or, or Myers major or particles of decaying matter in the air. Yeah. They didn't know what it was. No, no. No, so, just washing your hands, those simple hygiene s- steps. Yeah. That, that was and, a major part. And, of and you one, guess yeah. who were the most resistant of taking up the germ theory? Surgeons. Yeah, and right. And Dr. Doug talks about when he did his surgical residency and did the history of it, where it was very, very famous for a doctor in the olden days to have blood all over him or her. It's usually him, unfortunately. Uh, and then they would go straight to the next patient with all the mess all over them because mm. germs, it wasn't the blood. Then There was nothing in there that caused it. Yeah. So they called BS on all this and yeah. eventually... You know, because they, they killed a lot of people by spreading bugs all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but they yeah. didn't know. They, no. they did not know. They didn't know about that. So it was all all quite a, a scary breakthrough there. Um, so that, that that's another good one. I'm going to get to some of the, the more um, uh, unfortunate ones. That, that Well, do, do you want an unfortunate one, do you? Oh, yeah, all right. why not? Well, what, what, guess, guess what the treatment so was. So far, I'm going back to a doctor with hysteria. <laughs> that's, that's, all, that's all I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> Find well, my uterus. I'm going crazy, find doctor. They are, it, it, for, wow. Well, you know, it's it's it's. A you bulk will that service? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what they did because it was a very popular service I among bet. the women. Because they, they didn't know it was just a it was a service. What an amazing machine. Yeah. T- anyway, anyway. Yeah. Let's go. Well, no, another one was let's say you went to the doctor for a cough. Say your kid had a cough. My okay? kid one had a cough. Children. And Henry's got a cough. The, this is a printout from a label, and, and the treatments are in it are not one, but two different kinds of morphine. Yep. In the cough medicine. Yeah. Chloroform in the cough medicine. Yeah, really. Yes. Codeine. Yeah. Which, by the way, is still used to this very day as yeah. a cough medicine. Heroin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you getting this down? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually next, writing a recipe. Ne- here next for ingredient. The Christmas party. Next ingredient was <laughs> opium. Oh, what the yeah. hell? And guess what the final ingredient was? Oh, may as well throw some hash cookies in there. Cannabis! Time. Oh, you serious? <laughs> I was only actually joking. That's crazy. But this it is was the greatest cough mix on earth. Can, it, we, can we release that as a pre-workout? Oh, look, why not? I mean, this was the medicine of the day. This was a... What a wonderful it was, day that it would have been. children's... I would have been wondering. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> My well, wandering uterus is making me cough. Let's have a party. The, 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 good, the, the good news is... Can I bring my wife? ...that Bayer uh, refined it down to finding the active, which was heroin. Yeah, that's fantastic. That was a more later cough medicine. 
Um, so uh, pretty interesting. But I've got I've got a cure for your impotence, Matt. Are you ready oh, for awesome. this one? You ready for this one? Because I can stop looking for my lost uterus then. Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what you do is you you find a power socket, you wear an electric belt. Hang on, what year I, was this? Uh, this year was 19th century uh, in Portland, Oregon. This is yeah. where they used to, used to sell for five thousand dollars. Shit, not worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to buy one um, anyway. And 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 I don't know how you can picture this out here if you're listening to this. This is going to okay, be very so, so hang You've on, got a belt. Just, let's build this. Build the scene. Yes. I can't get it up, Steve. Oh, oh, that's no problem at all. Hey, I have this belt and plug it in. Yeah. Okay. And the belt you wear around your waist. Yeah. And then at the front of the belt, this is the interesting part. This sounds you've interesting. got an exposed wire that goes around with like a hanging from the noose on it. Oh. And guess what that goes around? Mm. We, we don't need to describe this, do we? I'm a bit confused. Well, the tip or the base or the nuts or what are we talking about? I don't think they specify. Just around just probably the base of it, I guess. Things. I don't know. And then you switched it on. The PowerPoint. Yeah. And you had a... I oh, now do believe result. Edison's an arse. I've been watching all these memes where they say Tesla's great, Edison's yeah. a bugger. Holy hell, are you serious? Awesome. Because you've got to remember that, that back then, um, and, and this also killed a physician back then. That, they that, got that, rid of your pubic hair. This sounds ter- terrible. It's awesome, mate. This killed a great. physician. Yeah, yeah. When, when An they, impotent physician. No. <laughs> this is how they discovered that the electric body works on electricity. Was they got a dead person. Yeah. It was cold and dead. Yeah. They put an electric current through him. And he got a woody. Well, no, he, he jumped out. He, he, he moved. Oh. And one of the physicians got so freaked out that he died of a heart attack. Oh, man. <laughs> because a dead person basically coming back to life. you got to remember, they didn't come back to life, but they just went, Bleh, you know. Yeah. They, because they were shocked. Yeah, and the yeah, muscles yeah. contracted. Yeah. And so they thought this, they used that principle to say, well, your, your lack of wood is because of your lack of electricity yeah right so give it electricity and wood doesn't even conduct electricity no, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't so wow. so that's how they used to treat it and it was called dr standen electric belt or that's the awesome dr. Stand- that's awesome if i ever it? get a band that's what i'm going to call my that's going to be my new <laughs> band name dr standen's electric belt but but it goes <laughs> goes goes further than that it was going to be 20 I've, 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 I've got an ad, i've got an ad here mm. and uh, maybe i can get it close to that it says who are debilitated and suffering from nervous stability, seminal weakness, losses, drain, impotency, or loss of manhood. They just threw in rheumatism, <laughs> lame back, <laughs> kidney troubles, nervousness, sleeplessness, oh. poor memory, and general ill health. Now, just a question for you. How does electrocuting your genitals help your sleeplessness? No, it's the <laughs> fact that if you can't get your genitals to work, you might be lying in bed and wake at night. Oh, Same yeah. thing if you've got rheumatism, you can't make a proper fist. Yes, yeah, so so I was thinking this is all BS, but it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> Steve-o, that's oh, a terrible do, one. Do you want to get a close-up of this ad for the people who are watching this on YouTube to say I'm not making this up? No, that's true. That's it. You got it? Good. I'll, oh, I'll put it down now. Lucky there's no pictures of... Um, you know, yeah. the anatomy of a male on there. But people were wearing braces to keep their pants up until the 60s or something, weren't they? Yet oh. they had belts that would give you an erection from the... When was that? Electric belts, oh, from the 19th century. So it's true. Portland, Oregon. It stands an electric company. Um, 172 First Street, Portland, Oregon. There you go. So if oh, you're in you the area... A place to go, if you're in the area, go get yourself a belt. It's there, so it's, it's an advert. Wow. But, but, you know, this is cool. I mean, because... lightning you, rod. Exactly. That's what I would have called it. I just, just you know, I just <laughs> can't remember. Viagra was a long way off. That was 1998, Viagra. 1998? Yeah. So that's what, 20 years ago? And you know what? Yeah. It, it overtook Premarin yeah. as the number one selling drug in the world. The Premarin was the pregnant mare's urine that was killing everyone. Yeah, it was the biggest selling drug in the world. And that, and then it wasn't until 2002 that they actually did the study Tested and worked it. out it was killing everyone. Yeah. But apart from death, it has very little side effects. What? Because the, the, they're dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. But pa- that, it's pretty hard to get a, a long, chronic, bloody long-term side effect yeah, if you're dead. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it helps it's, all the stats, Steve. It's, it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty good. But, wow. uh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that, so there, there's... Now, I've got a bit more, a, a serious one, a history one here that's not so pleasant. I won't show you the photo of this. Um, but basically, it was called the transorbital lobotomy. Oh. Yeah, you can see the photo. Um Basically, what they did was um, transorbital means beside the orbit of the eye. So they would get an ice pick, and I'm not joking, is they would put it in the eye there, hammer it in, and then they would sever the temporal lobe. And the temporal lobe is where you get a lot of motions from. So, so if your children are playing up and you've got a very, you know, misbehaving something, the lobotomy, which is still 
practice of this very yeah, day, yeah, like, yeah. Um, would absolutely cure the hysteria because they'd become numb and they call it ECT or something. Don't they? ECT, ECT is therapy. when they give an electro, yeah, and that's still yeah. current today yeah. too. They, uh, they just people know lobotomies are bad. Yeah, well, lobotomies yeah. were bad because they overdid it. They did it to pretty much anyone. Yeah, right. You know, right. it was it was a, one of the first line treatments severing part of your brain. Truth. It was like the, he- the hemectomy over the earlier days where they started cutting the brain and cutting, you know, removing the, the corpus callosum that joins the left and right hemisphere. That was a, a pretty bad treatment too. Yeah, I can imagine. That's yeah. a little bit extreme. Yeah, but you got to remember the doctors, this was quite a popular treatment. Imagine if you went back and told them, guys, hey, it could be linked into a gut bug. Yeah. A little bacteria in your belly it, it, and they're going, yeah. are you crazy? I mean, you know, they used a 10-inch ice pick. For slicing the brain. Yeah, it's pretty scary. And you wouldn't need an anesthetic or anything. It was, you know, it was all good. So that's that's a pretty bad one, of course. Um, and um, So what about alum? And what are these heavy oh, metals? Because yeah. there was a big history of heavy metals. When I remember there alum, was, yeah. which is aluminium. Aluminium, yep. Um, and aluminium had all these problems associated with aluminium toxicity, of course, mm. which listed off things like um, um, seizures, mm. um, behavioural problems, neurotoxic. cognitive problems dysfunction um you know insomnia um list off oh there's so many other little seizures there's a similar thing with mercury they get very similar um defects hey with mercury yes and it's almost exactly the same symptom picture if, if you can't find the symptom picture for um aluminium and mercury toxicity mm. just mm. find the symptom picture for autism yeah yeah they're, they're the same yeah yeah so, pretty much yeah and, and that's and why aluminium and mercury are now no longer used as therapeutic aspects of treatments they're actually used as inactive excipients yes apparently well arsenic was an active too it was, was it an act- yeah it was an active treatment they yeah. had mercury in that and cyanide ever do that one oh Why not? the the nazis used cyanide to kill themselves in the in the in the nuremberg trials oh, i think that would have fixed their arthritis that fixed their arthritis and everything how they that's how <laughs> that, that was a suicide treatment to, to stop you know giving away secrets yeah all right um uh, there is another treatment i would like to i'm sure you'd be fascinated about it i sound it, fascinated it's called the clyster syringe now do you want me to tell you about this yeah it's not good yeah tell me then okay all you do is you get boards bile what? okay what? Boar, you know the boar the pig the boar yeah that's yeah. uh, very strong and powerful animal uh, so you get its uh, bile yeah which is obvious the obvious thing get syringe and get the syringe and shove it up your what are you anal doing? passage oh well, i had no idea what the <laughs> hell are you holding <laughs> that, that, what are those? They, they were big things and they they pushed them in like that into the anal passage steve yeah, that's how they you get it. You don't hold someone's butt like that. No, no, the syringe is in there. Oh, and then you so push the vials. Punching it up like that because it, it wasn't a needle. It was a, it was a, like that that size. It was a, it was like the size of your small finger, and you shove it up your rectum. Uh, yeah, right. Rectum, yeah. all right. Rectum. And it's <laughs> rectum. Broken them. And it was great. It was worked really well for nothing. For what? So, no, to what sorry, sorry. Oh, what, what purpose? What is it for? What did you stick? What, All ailments. What did you put? Bear bile up your bottom. It was boar bile. We're going to get the sorry, right was, bile. I'm a fool. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so you know that, so, so, so boar bile up the bottom yeah for what Steve pretty much any ale all kinds of ailments just to stop you whinging <laughs> oh, seriously the statistics would do that it's like one of those things it's like man these guys kept coming back complaining of this particular problem yeah. I got out my big syringe of boar bile and I stuck it up their date they never come back never mm. complain never again. complain their again. file says case closed case closed these guys said no back. fine fine and every time I asked about it fine no yep. no it's fine Amazing, eh? Mm. It's not as bad as one treatment. Not as bad as it. There's a treatment. There, there's worse a worse one. Bore bile up your day. I, I think there is. Uh, so far, these. You know what? This whole equal rights movement's rubbish. So far, the blokes have had their old fellas electrocuted, bore bile up the day. The women get a pleasurable experience with a vibrator yeah, to find fair. their lost uterus. Do you, do you want me to give you a bad one? For no wonder the doctors are males. This oh, is like a, there, This there, is a joke. There was a weight. There was two weight loss uh, products that were marketed towards women mm-hmm. for losing their weight. The first one was a uh, tapeworm. Oh, they would yep. give them a tapeworm yep. to make them lose weight. And the second one was amphetamines. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Because it gave them energy, or vigour as they called it. Yeah. And they lost weight. Yeah, bad. What's wrong with that? No, well, it's created some problems in oh. today's society, but um, nowhere near as much as the other <laughs> prescription drugs that are still out there. Yeah. Um, so it was called tapeworm weight loss. So, oh, man, sorry. So that was pretty cool. But but there is there is a worse treatment for, for everyone and it's called um, you got worse again yeah 
It's called trepanning, which is, of course... Trepanning. Tr- trepanning, which uh, there's the picture. I don't think we need to see that. I don't one. see a graphic. picture, but I don't but know. Basically, they would clamp the, the skull in position and then, of course, get a screw thing and drill a hole into the skull. Yeah, that makes sense. To let the <laughs> evil spirits out. Oh, well, of course. So if you had chronic headaches and that sort of thing, mm-hmm. and here's the worst part of it. It actually sometimes helped people well, because they had intracranial pressure. Yeah. And um, sometimes, yeah. Just, just obviously... A lot of times with dial. But what was for, for again, sorry, Steve? Well, for any sort of evil spirits that are in your head, like oh, headaches. Like migraines. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They didn't have yeah. that sort of technical word back then. No. So they, they let the bad spirits out, which was drilling Through a hole in the your hole. head. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool, eh? Probably and there's noise skulls like, that are, you know, being dug up that, that yeah. does that sort of thing. Pretty pretty oh. scary stuff. So that, that, yeah, that, that is was, messed up, really, Steve. Yeah, yeah, but um, it, it could be worse. You could have a toothache back in Egypt. Yeah, tell us what they did to your teeth in Egypt. You give them dead mouse paste and put it <laughs> on your tooth. <laughs> what? Yeah, well, rats or mice. And, and the reason for this, there is a lot Oh, sorry, rats. As well. At first I was thinking, what, just mouse? Just That's mouse. crazy. Just no, a dead mouse it's, in your it's, tooth? It's because... Well, they're the rat. Because the, the mice had lots of <laughs> bugs on them and bacteria and all that sort of thing. And you had periodontal disease was caused by bacteria. Yeah. So this bacteria would compete with that bacteria... And of course, apart from poisoning you, your 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 decay would would help because it would kill that bacteria. Oh, it would compete it. That's so good. I've got a that? really weak stuff. This podcast that's, is really that's beautiful. Bad. That's that's genius treatment. But Mouse paste. Probiotics. Oh yeah, well that's pretty the early much probiotics. Pretty much. They just left the, the the mouse and rats involved in the trial. They had to do something with them. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I just mean, stick them in your tooth. There's there's worse than this. Even well, this like, very they day. would have been rotten then, wouldn't they? Old rotten. Yeah. Because they they, the they, they, they they ferment the meat yeah. to allow the bugs to the, rot the gut all bugs it. and all that because the mice were plenty and you just mix it up into like a mousse yeah. with all the bacteria. Oh, mousse. In it. Yeah, Look, the big antlers and that. <laughs> it's just getting out of hand. So you put the mouse inside the rat, <laughs> and the rat inside the mousse. It's pretty bad, isn't it? All right. Uh, there, there are all some of a sudden no one's complaining of no toothaches either. No, no, no one had toothache. Um, there was a treatment. Um, medicinal smoking was was prescribed a lot to. Uh, yeah. And that was done by doctors. Yep, yep. Uh, even up into the 60s. So I, I would have only been camel. That was the ads, wasn't it? Doctors smoke camel. Yes, that's right. That's <laughs> the adverts when they say smoke Because it eased the stress. Okay, yeah. And everyone was getting lung cancer at the time, but that was due to the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, It yeah. wasn't to the cigarettes. Oh, really? That's it. So that's how they confuse it. Now, of course, even to this very day, they use maggots and leeches. So I've excluded them from the podcast a bit. But yep. Basically, you can use them today to, to for bleeding disorders. To stuff up and that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. So there's yeah, some wow. funny ones there. Um, um, look, you know, it wasn't all bad. They did actually improve medicines for toddlers. Oh, yeah. Yep. So they didn't yep. just have that horrendous medicine you saw earlier. Sounds fantastic medicine. There, so I new, reckon my kids would love that. Yeah. There, Bring it out at the birthday party. There's Winchell's teething formula, which actually worked extremely well. Yeah. Winchell's teething, yeah. Uh, a syrup. It's licorice flavoured, so we're, we're on the right oh, yeah, track. Nice. And it was used to soothe teeth in the baby. Glabra, that's got yep. a lot of mucosal yep. anti inflammatory effects. And the active ingredient was morphine. That's the only way to make licorice tea better. I don't, I don't see a problem with that. That was in the 1800s, and of course... And that's for the know? toddlers. Yep, 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 it's for toddlers. And you know what's freaky? What? Did they have much SIDS then? All these respiratory sedatives said it, said it yeah. and everything like that. I, I mean, I don't know, they might have called it something else. They well, did have a lot of... Yeah, there was a lot of people not making it through to school. Exactly. I suppose there was a, you, you have a look in the old um, cemeteries and there's a lot of little ones. So yeah, this could yeah. have been a few by this teething syrup. You've got to remember that this, yeah. this would actually help the baby too. So if, if, if the dose was right, and I hate that it's addictive and it's terrible, but the baby, there, as you said, there's a little bit of truth yeah. in there. If it killed everyone, they would just stop it. But yeah. they, 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 they found that it helped some. There'd be a dose that'd work. Yeah. Two, well, morphine. For, two for mum, one for bub. Yeah. Up, up yeah, to, up to 10 milligrams injection, you can probably yeah. survive. Yeah, you know? yeah. I remember Dr. Doug telling me a story. He gave someone 10 milligrams of uh, morphine when they got stung by a jellyfish up in oh, the yeah, tie and yeah. you had to fly with them back to keep them well, breathing. that's something you wee on. That's one of yes. the old, that's one of the theories up there is you wee on it. But I think yeah. that's just you, you kind of pre-frame your mate to let him know that if he's yeah. going to get stung, you're just going to chase him around, win on him. Exactly. But, um, you know, vinegar too. But look, look, all right, the, the, the morphine <laughs> thing didn't fly, so they came out with a new drug a little bit later on because the morphine was highly addictive, okay? Yeah. Came out a bit, so new and improved formula, and it was heroin. Yeah, that's so, not, not addictive go. at all. No, it? not at all. It, do, <laughs> it doesn't metabolise the morphine at all in the body. Man. Um, all right, but look, let, let, let's get to the serious guys, the big hitters. Let, let's talk about Zygmunt Freud. Has everyone heard of him? Oh, I've think? heard of him. 
yeah, famous psychotherapist and all yep. this sort of stuff, you know. The Freudian uh, slip Freudian. I get accused of all the time. That's <laughs> that dude, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. He was one of the biggest proponents of a drug that would make you feel better and help with depression, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Cocaine. This is fantastic. It's great. These guys are a full on. Uh, this is. No wonder they liked it. No wonder this has become mainstream. Medicine was... All the other horrible herbal teas. Why would we drink and licorice tea and clove for a mouth when we can be on morphine and heroines and cocaines and amphetamines? All, and all at once if you get a cough. Yeah, all at once if you got Imagine a Imagine getting a <coughs> cough. All right, so, so <laughs> let's say you had a mild condition these days. Um, let's say you, you developed, I don't know, something like lice or something, you know, in your oh, hair. Yeah. yeah, lice. Pretty treatment. So you could use a little brush or cut your hair off. <laughs> or? Or DDT. <laughs> You just washed your hair with DDT. That's fine. What's wrong with that? I don't, when, how long did that last on the market before they realised it was already in the penguins in well, Antarctica? They, they used it on the, um, of course, the army. Yeah. And this was done in the 40s, of course, yeah. World War II. So, so good on them, eh? Oh, they, they killed the lice. Yeah. Again, it, bet it, it worked. Did. It killed the lice. Uh, so now they did a study. That was around 2000 they did a study trying to find an animal on Earth that didn't have traces of DDT in it. No, oh, it's not and me. And all that went through to Antarctica and everything yep. found traces of DDT into the penguins. It was only on the market for, what, 30 years? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now we've got Roundup. Roundup, yeah. So we'll talk about that on another podcast. Yes, absolutely. When I, when I record it and then I disappear and then we will release it. Oh, absolutely. And I'll... All right, I'll take you back to the early 20th century. You got syphilis, <laughs> Matt? No, I don't. <laughs> Who told you that? Wow. Apparently, Al Capone had syphilis, and that's why he wasn't such a badass gangster. He was actually nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah because it does, it, it does affect your, your yeah. brain and everything. Yeah. It causes electric shock like behavior in the body. Yeah, right. Um, so, anyway, so you got syphilis. Again, this is pre antibiotic days. Yeah. This is because antibiotics were about 20 years after this. Yep. Um, guess what they gave you to treat you? What? This is not very good. Malaria. What? They gave them, infected them with malaria because they found that syphilis didn't respond, uh, didn't live in hot environments. Oh, so, so the, malaria gives you a huge fever and then kills you. But apart from the killing you, it gives you a huge fever. Well, it stopped the syphilis again. It stopped the syphilis. They seem to see a bit of a trend. If you die of something else in between it, they record it as a win. Well, you know what? There's no syphilis. Syphilis dies out after... So, so again, the, the treatment is pretty cool. Because, you know, apart from the death, it's, it works because <laughs> of the fever it induces. Malaria yeah. is, it kills about a quarter of a million people a year, malaria. It's a yeah. massive. How many people could die from syphilis? Just not many. <laughs> 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 not that many. So it was oh. a little bit of an oopsie daisy with malaria. A little bit so of an oopsie daisy, you reckon? Yeah, just, just a tiny bit, you know. Um, so a uh, bit of a problem there. Yeah. But, um, there, there, is, um, there is another treatment for brain that, um, you know, that, that basically children can have if they have uh, brain issues, which is basically removing half the brain. Well, okay. Hemectomy. Which part? Oh, the left, or well, usually the right hemisphere. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, they take it with the right hemisphere. Yeah. yeah. Kids were fine. But they weren't allowed to um, write with their left hand anyway. But what if, what, what about if you had a subtle disease like a speech therapy where you had a list or something like that? You know, you started talking like this or something. Oh, I think they'd, uh, they'd label you as something, Steve. They no, would in that day and age, not today, of course. No, not today. To speak as you choose. But they would give you a partial gl glossectomy. You know what that is? No. Cut Take the end of your tongue, your tongue off. Yeah, well That'll not. fix your speech impediment. Exactly, it would. That's my point, exactly. I don't know why this is in the history books. Yeah. This is, t t this is common sense, it's really. It's common sense. Your, your tongue's doing something weird when you say your S's, Steve. Chop yeah, exactly. it off. Yeah, exactly. Just chop it off. Exactly. Um, or change your sentence. Exactly. One of the two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, now, this is one's a little bit distasteful, unlike the others, which have been oh, no, completely this, this tasteful. Been totally classy. Close to so classy. All right, so let's say you were back in Hippocrates' days. Yeah. And you had a hemorrhoid on your buttocks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, I can imagine that. Have you ever heard the term shove a hot poker up your bum? Never. Never? No, I actually haven't. All right. Does the people say that to you, Steve? Well, Hippocrates said that back to then. You? He said, he said, you're old, you, but he said, they heat up iron rods until they're red hot and then burn the hemorrhoids off. Mm. What's wrong with that? I, Yes, well, I would quit again. I would. I would never go back to that doctor. And again, once again, it would be like that was a cured mate. Yeah. Not one will come back. In fact, I don't even have an asshole there anymore. No. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, if you've got that, that sort of that, that 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 sort of treatment is, is pretty bad. So, so unfortunately, wow. unfortunately, some of these things have gone. I mean, this is this is what annoys me. It's like these soothing cough syrups. These 
you know, heroin treatments, bloodletting. I reckon gone. they'd have to do the soothing cough treatment before they let you do the other, a lot of this other stuff. Well, that's pretty course. messed up. So this is the orthodox. So this is mainstream medicine. Mainstream medicine. This is yeah. orthodox medicine. Yeah. None of this alternative weird, weird stuff, stuff that was stupid and, and killed. Maybe people. some of this natural medicine is complementary because it goes through and soothes the the burnt rectum from the iron rods with a with a nice calendula cream or something or, or maybe we, we're actually there helping addressing some of these addictions associated with these drugs morphine heroin um yeah or maybe tr- well i know we can't be putting the bits of the brain back and the bits of the body to the back but so maybe we're complementing this medicine by feeding them in between it's pretty incredible isn't it and it's strange and it's a little bit offended offensive to think that um having, having soups stews teas foods things that are derived from that are alternative yeah. to this. To an ice pick Thank across the God eyeball. We're alter- I'm actually starting to think, actually, no, man, we're seriously alternative medicine. We're a much better alternative, I think, than oh, hot pokers and steel and heavy metals and struth. Like and that. bloodletting. And you know, then about, Premarin, yeah. which is still on the market today. Yep. Most of the, A lot of those things that you mentioned actually still on the market today. Well, we're just starting to get a little bit better at knowing how to use them. The, the opioids are still, and that's mm. a huge problem. They're, they're, Interesting they're to see in 2,000 years' time. Yeah, well, what they talk back. So, like for now, we're looking back at natural medicine, looking at a two thousand year history. Go, man, it makes sense. It's yeah. actually starting to make more sense now mm. than it did a um, hundred years ago, which yes. is possibly why um, this is happening. Yeah. So now, with a new technology to act- actually understand genes, microbiomes, and understanding nutrients and vitamins and minerals and uh-huh. all these different little cofactors, yeah. we're now science is catching up to natural medicine. This is the difference. Yes. Science is now catching up to natural medicine to the point that we can explain it which allows us to make it more predictable and mm. more effective. Mm. Where, exactly. Where the mainstream medicine uh, for 100 years, science is catching up to realise that, oh my gosh, gosh, so some of these things should be banned. Some of these things are doing more harm than good and the risk versus benefit ratio is not there. Mm. Um, of course, there is a hell of a lot of stuff that is really important. For example, if you get uh, certain infections and things like that and you need to use the antibiotics that have been shown to be sensitive to kill it, then you definitely do it. Sure. If you get shot, don't go to a naturopath. No. Um, if you're impotent, go get one of them belts. That's Now you're talking. Now you're talking. I'm, I've, I've got mine online. I've ordered one from Portland, Oregon. It's on What's in the What's online? The, 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 the penis belt. Oh, you got an Ethernet in there or something. Ethernet cable. <laughs> 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 click, click. <laughs> I bet you tried to put it in upside down the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. You could probably get it as a USB stick these days, Steve. Probably. It's more modern. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You'd love to go back in these days and just say, oh, can I try it for a night? Imagine what would happen. What? The belt, the, the, the penal belt. You're a little bit kinky, Steve. I never yeah. took you as awesome, that guy. I took you more as a feather kind of guy, not a chicken. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the whole chook. The whole um, chook. Yeah, no, I'd go back for my wandering uterus and... Uh, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I mean, that's a really bit strange. If you're a woman, you would go to the yeah. doctor back then quite readily. Oh, hell the yeah. wandering uterus well, With thing. a cough, I'm walking... A <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. Lo- I'm losing my mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. us a shot of that stuff while I lie back. And Find my uterus for me, doctor. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good medical <laughs> thing. The ladies of the day um, weren't hard They had a by. good, eh? They had a good, I don't... Well, I don't the poor blokes coming out of the coal mine with a hemorrhoid. Yeah, yeah, Going yeah. to the doctor, copping a hiding. yeah. While his wife's just walking out going, he's the best doctor. He's great. He's so good, our family doctor. I'm going back tomorrow. And the kids have got a cough too. Can I take some home? <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the abuse, the, 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 the whole... I mean, that, that's the most addictive substance known to man. All in one bottle, a whole lot of it. Yeah. And they give it for some, for someone with a cough. To the babies too. Yeah. I mean, opioids suppress coughs. They're still used. They stay, we use codeine phosphate and they're used... Yeah. And, and even Procol is yeah. when you get over the pharmacy, yeah. which is like codeine... But it's a cough suppressant. I mean... Well, you're in a massive chemical straitjacket. You can't <laughs> cough. No, you can't <laughs> cough. It suppresses your breathing a little bit to stop you coughing. Yeah. You know, I mean... Oh, my goodness. Uh, the, my favourite cough medicine in, in the pharmacy is camphalictus, which is a fantastic yeah. sort of menthol thing that yeah. really stops coughs. But, yeah. I mean, really, this is this is incredible what's, what's happened over the years with medicine and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. There's, there's, there's some interesting stuff in there. Yeah, that's crazy, eh? And crazy. then we look at these natural stuff. Like we, I'm obsessed with like frankincense and myrrh mm. at the moment. Mm. You look at the history of that, or how they used to burn that, just because burning it would get it into the crevices. Whenever they had groups of people, 
get into the fabric of their clothes and get into the wood mm. and all those sort of places only by burning it kills off all the microbes kills the spirits too doesn't it in the church <coughs> kills all the evil same thing oh yeah oh yeah just, yeah that's they right just used to call them spirits because they couldn't see the microbes exactly that's better than putting a hole in your head to release the spirits what's wrong with that it's, it's how do else the spirits get out of your head? That's, that's a mainstream, mate. Yeah, that's mainstream it's medicine. Awesome. All right. Well, that's well, enough we, of that we shenanigans. Have, we, well, we have run out of time, mate. Oh, you did it again. Big Steve. time. Run right. out of time. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks um, for having I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Bit of a laugh. Thanks for having us in your ears. Yeah, a bit of a laugh over Chrissy, you know. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. Have a great day, guys. All right. See ya.